Hello friends, I am Ardhindu De and you are watching ADC English Literature. Today we are discussing the genre of problem play. As a literary student, you probably all know that the 19th century Norwegian playwright Hendrik Ibsen produced what he called problem plays as an aspect of the new realism that was burning issues at that time. The protagonist in those plays is not a tragic or comic figure in normal sense, but uh, an individual who is more of a representative of the contemporary social problem. The term problem play was first coined by critic F. S. Boas in Shakespeare and his predecessors, which was written in 1896. Boas' use of the phrase was derived from a type of drama that was popular at the time of his writing. Most commonly associated with the Norwegian playwright Hendrik Ibsen. Later, the term problem play was used by Sidney Grundy, who used it in a disparaging sense for the intellectual drama of the 18th century. The problem play deals with problems, as the name suggests. Eric Bentley, an influential theoretical critic as well as a scholar, author and playwright, finds the justification of the world's problem on the ground that the play ends with a question mark. This type of play ends with a question mark. He says that the dramatist's business is to state his problem clearly and effectively and not to present a ready-made solution or to suggest a specific remedy. Literature is the heritage of culture. Keeping this heritage safe for thousands of years, literature has shown the path of society from time to time. Drama is such a popular form of literature in which the real situation, folk culture and ideals and values of that era are portrayed. It can be called the corpus of the philosophy of social life. Whether its story is famous, productive or mixed, in it the happy and sad states of human life, various expressions and acting are expressed in such a way that the audience gets lost in it, along with the expression of the heart feelings of man, the problems, the questions inherent in the structure of society various human situations. These are all exposed in drama. The social sphere of English drama is multidimensional and diverse. These include rich material related to personal life, to family, social, economic, religious and political subjects. The playwright is the vigilant watchdog of the society. The society itself has inspired him in the work of literary creation. The determination to protect cultural values, communicate social consciousness and strengthen the system is reflected in English plays. These include social evils, rotten customs, dilapidated beliefs, traditional polygamy, love affairs of a married man with another woman, abandonment of wife, prostitution, adultery, snap, frustrated judicial system of religion, narcissism, female subordination, mismatched marriage, other and many other things that we can include here. Uh, these have become the subject of discussion in various contexts. In these vicious tendencies like theft, gambling, corruption, rape, kidnapping, murder, suicide, burning, the, the, the so-called problems, even 
the superstitions, prostitution, slavery have also been depicted directly or indirectly according uh, to the context. And the drama represents all these things only to make a pen portrait of the reality of this world. Now, these are all true from the beginning of English drama, particularly the morality or mystery plays. So, realism or the realistic show of the social problem in English drama is as old as the mysteries and moralities, which sometimes included realistic situations and characters from humble rustic life. If Shakespeare's works are examined from this broad point of view, we find that those plays that contain prominently a realistic element may include Henry IV, Mary Wipes of Windsor, Midsummer's Night's Dream, Julius Caesar, Antony and Cleopatra, Cariolinas, and Troilus and Cressida, which this kind of uh, dramas obviously uh, approximately which the period covers from 1597 to 1603 or a little later are the problem plays of William Shakespeare. It is notable that at this time Ben Johnson wrote close to realism almost all his plays from the time of every man in his humor uh, and uh, later onward plays are of a realistic order. Thomas Decker of the same time. Uh, Thomas Decker's The Honest Whore and The Shoemaker's Holiday are realistic dramas because it truly reflects the parallel society that they face. The Elizabethan tradition of realistic drama was revived in the sentimental drama in the 18th century. The problem is supposed to have arisen quite distinctly from the sentimental drama of the 18th century and often been, often been identified with serious drama. The problem drama essentially differs from the tragedy. Even though it deals with serious issues, it normally exhibits ideas, situations and feelings that lack tragic dimension. So, realism once again became a revitalizing current in English drama in the second half of the Victorian era. Towards the end of the Victorian age, the drama of social problems came into prominence in England. The problem play was the presentation of a contemporary question through realistic technique. Just try to understand. The dramatists are writing plays on social uh, issues and they are of, like that of social criticism. And they are made a, a conscious effort to deal with problems of contemporary society and morality. The drama which was directly inspired by the social ferment of the time could be effective only if it is adopted a realistic form or medium. Because problem play required a high level of craftsmanship and dramaturgic skill. So problem play does not exhibit a kind of problem dragged into stage. Rather, how this problem can be dramatically presented is a great skill. Henry Johan Ibsen was a Norwegian playwright and theatre director. As one of the founders of modernism in theatre, Ibsen is often referred as the father of realism, as one of the most influential playwrights of his time. He is often ranked as one of the most distinguished playwrights in the European tradition and is widely accepted or regarded as the foremost playwright of the 19th century. Now, he influenced other playwrights and novelists of that time throughout the Europe, throughout the world in fact, such as uh, George Bernard Shaw, Oscar Wilde, Arthur Miller, James Joyce, Eugene O'Neill. So, um, Ibsen's influence on English problem playwright is great. 
so understanding ibsen's writing and understanding this kind of playwrights is a bit is a bit difficult in that sense we cannot have those ideas prominent or direct unless we dive into that society in fact the problem play was a new experiment in form and technique and dispensed with the conventional devices and expedients of the victorian era and those were closely related to the growth of the realistic movement in the field of english drama it was largely felt that the essence of drama was the faithful presentation of life and that's truly represented in realistic drama now we will carry out a few of the discussions of english problem playwrights first of all henry arthur jones he is believed that the drama should uh, parrot social criticism he wrote the silver king and went on to write prolifically often appearing to mirror ibsen from the opposite viewpoint as a right winger he engaged in extensive debates with left wing writers such as george bernard shaw and a g wells there are three rules for writing plays said oscar wilde quite critically on him the first rule is not to write like henry arthur jones the second and third rule are the same that's truly a bitter banter what do you say george bernard shaw had the longest career in the history of english dramatists he was a moralist and a propagandist his first play Windsor Houses was an economic tract in uh, dramatic form but it failed on the stage his collections of seven plays plays pleasant and unpleasant appeared in 1898 in which he voiced his idea on many social problems arms and the man which was published in 1894 is a satire on the military and romanticism it professes to be anti romantic play the exposition scene with its surprise its suspense its touches of fancy is enough to show the skill of so golsuti occupies a distinctive place in modern english drama his naturalism reminds us of ibsen he is a critic and interpreter of contemporary english life in his dramas like so he handles definite problems those of marriage of sex relationship of labor uh, of labor dispute rather on contemporary laws of solitary confinement of caste of uh, human feelings of class prejudice his his silver box deals with the inequality of justice we we see how the majesty of the law may end in a horrible human mistake justice is a stem condemnation of the contemporary legal system it attacks the evils of the prison system especially solitary confinement it is a powerful plea for sympathetic treatment of law and um, his appeal to the law makers that it should be more human rather than merely a uh, law by words harley granville barker made a vital contribution to the problem play he was one of the first of his age to study spiritual aimlessness for its own sake his themes include the marriage convention sex and the position of women his significant problem plays are the pc inheritance west and the madras house the problem play remained theatrical in the 19th century for a number of reasons the criticism of problem drama has also been generally appreciated by the belief that didacticism and propaganda have no place in the theater james sinch said drama like 
the symphony does not teach or prove anything the problem play was partly neglected or remained outcast in the early 20th century and continued period but it was not totally neglected it was unquestionably the fruit of a strong dissatisfaction with the existing condition of the life it directed attention to the facts and problems of the social life some of the problem plays proved so effective that they imbued a man's mind uh, with a passionate resentment against social injustice mobilized public opinion in favor of prison reform or hastened legislative action no doubt the problem plays were produced in large numbers but since 1920 its supremacy came to be changed or challenged by the revival of the historical and imaginative drama and um, by the poetic drama and the experimental play that we find in later stages sorry the lecture goes to long for you but if you have any questions regarding problem plays many a point i have can missing but uh, if you have any questions i will give some explanation to that point and it would be beneficial to you if you make some comments and the discussion will further lead us of understanding problem plays so like share comment and obviously subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed you will miss many a things like this kind of lectures okay bye bye thank you